guys, in the fast lane here. In this video, we're going to be wiring in some pigtails for the EV14 Bosch injectors. Now, the reason why I'm going to be wiring them in instead of using those little clips is there's been a lot of reports where the clips have malfunctioned and you lean out on the dyno and blow your engine. So, I'm going to go with uh, soldering them in. What you're going to need for this job is you're going to get yourself some electrical shrink wrap. Also, you're going to need a little paint brush. And of course the EV14 clips, you can purchase these on eBay for around 20 bucks. Uh, we're also going to be using some plumbing flux. And you're probably wondering, well, why do you want some plumbing flux? Well, it helps transfer the heat a lot quicker and it'll melt the solder uh, at an earlier time. Now, if you don't use this, you could risk the chance of heating your wire up too much and then it starts to melt the wire. So I'm going to paint this on with that brush. Now the last thing we're going to need is the soldering iron. You can get this one at Walmart. It comes with the iron, some solder, and a different smaller tip. First step is we're going to cut these wire clips on the originals. But before you do that, make sure you disconnect your battery. Because we don't want to be cutting it. There's a ground and a positive and we don't want them to make contact. So we're going to cut them as close as we can. There's one. I'm not going to be reusing these. If you're going to be reusing them, then I suggest cutting them a little bit uh, off the clip itself. And that's it for that. Now as you can see with these injector clips, you have two colors, black and red. Now the red's always going to be the positive. If you don't know what the positive is, I'll get another shot here in a second. When you look down into the injector, itself it has a little plus sign on the Bosch EV14s and then you can just pretty much stick the clip in there and whichever wires on that that'll be your positive here's the injectors I'm gonna go ahead and try to zoom in and show you guys this uh, plus symbol as you can see it's right there on the injector and it's on the uh, little pin to the right so that's what you're looking for now what you'll do is you'll take this clip and we have the red so we're gonna just put it on there okay and obviously this one is on the uh, plus side so this is gonna be your plus but uh, reds plus uh, but if you just want to double check make sure you uh, do this now on here they made little slits on the uh, plastic covering so you can just kinda pull that piece off and that'll be a nice fresh piece of wire now I'm gonna prep these pigtails up by taking some shrink wrap and uh, just get something small like that and I'm just gonna cut uh, a few little pieces out of here with some scissors or snips one just kinda sizing them up these are gonna cover up the wire so I'm just gonna slide them down we want them on both the black and the red you need to get them on before you go soldering or else you won't be able to get them on there. Now we want to take those little slits that are on here and just kind of pull. Man, they're nice and even. You can even bend them with your finger a little bit to get them started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit bigger shrink wrap, a bigger one, and I'm going to slide it over the two wires. And we'll slide that all the way down. And then I'm going to take two of the smaller ones and put them on the individual wires. So once I'm done, I'll be able to put these two on, seal up that little solder joint, and then I'll take the big one and slide it over to hold them together. It's going to look something like that. This is OBD1. I had uh, be prior, uh, went ahead and soldered on different clips, OBD1. So for OBD2, this is an OBD2 uh, chassis. It's a 98 Civic. So what we got here is the yellow with the black stripe. That's going to be your positive and the brown will be your negative. Now I did mention that you want to do positive and negative but you can reverse the polarity. You could put them on the opposite uh, the black wire to the positive and the red wire to the negative. Um, but if you do that make sure that each injector is the same setup as the first one that you did. So if you got black on the positive you're gonna do black on the positive all the way. If you did uh, Red on the positive, make sure you do red on the positive all the way, all four of them. Now I'm going to take the red wire, and if you look closely, I haven't twisted the wires yet. I'm going to
gonna kind of leave them frayed. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the wires and kind of insert them into each other. This will help keep all the little strands uh, kind of together and it'll help the solder to kind of seep down in there. So that's what I'm gonna do with this. Once I, once I get them kind of twisted, they'll kind of twist together. See, the tighter you make the twist, the harder it is for the solder to kind of get down in there. So there's one, you can see how that is. And I'm gonna go get the paste and rub some of the paste on there and then we'll be able to solder it. Right now we got the solder iron preheating. We're just gonna take a little bit of this flux and we're just gonna rub it on there, just gently. So we don't wanna mess up the joint that we just made. What's nice about this solder that comes with it is it's really thin stuff. So you can kind of pull it out like that and then hold the gun and just give it a nice little push and it's not too thick to where it's going to just pile up. Uh, if you have a nice manifold like I do and you don't want to ruin the paint if the solder drips on there and starts to melt, you might want to put something underneath it. Alright, our soldering iron appears to be hot enough, so I'm going to try to do this on camera because I probably kind of have to get in front of it. but. And there we go. We got a nice joint. Now you can see how the flux started to heat up and it allowed the solder to melt really nicely in between those wires. And that's how you get a good connection. There we go. And I got a mosquito biting my leg while I'm doing this. Yeah. So there's number two. And what I like to do is flip them upside down and hit them one more time on the bottom if it doesn't quite penetrate through those wires. So now I'm gonna take a lighter. I know I didn't mention this earlier, but uh, you could use a heat gun, but I just don't feel like plugging it in, so this will be easier. This is what I'm gonna use to heat the shrink wrap. So what we're gonna do, now that we have uh, it already soldered, we're gonna take our two wires right here, and we're gonna slide these ones up, and then right over the joints, kinda of center them. There we go. Now I'm just going to heat those and then we'll slide the last big one up. So just come in here. So this is what they look like when they're all finished with the shrink wrap. Now I'm just going to take either a long screwdriver or a pencil and I'm just going to twist the uh, wires, kind of just twist them around like this and then push them together and get them even tighter. Now you can take like a little heat gun and maybe hit it real quick, but I wouldn't suggest that you might melt something, all that hard work you just did. So now we'll just pull it out, and it just gives them a nice little springy, so when you're done, you can not have your wires sticking out everywhere. I've seen some where they're kind of just sitting up and kind of look a little messy. So this is the aftermath of either twirling it on a pencil or a long uh, extension or screwdriver, and it kind of looks a lot neater.